So what is the difference between asynchronous HTTP X and HTTP X libraries? I got a question from my subscriber that was basically asking the difference between HTTPX and asynchronous HTTPX libraries. And I actually spent a while trying to find the information, any relevant possible information in the internet about asynchronous HTTPX library. And it was pretty tricky because this library is not actually a well-known library. It is essentially a wrapper around the HTTPX library itself. Well, the fun fact is that I have never heard about this library myself and I have never used that in my work. But based on my understanding, I can definitely tell you the difference between those libraries since the HTTPX is a very common and well-known library for making the HTTP requests, which supports different HTTP protocols, including the HTTP protocol, the second version of it. Yeah, I mean, the HTTPX is quite common one. You can find lots of information in regards to HTTPX library in the internet. There is official documentation which which provides all the essential instructions how to set this up, how to get started with this library. And there is an advanced guide here, so you can find all the information necessary to, to know about this library just basically in the documentation. There is a asynchronous HTTPX repo, which belongs to Growth Engine AI, AI-powered solutions augmenting human decisions to improve precision and efficiency and accuracy, Jesus. I didn't know that this kind of thing exists, but it does. And based on my understanding, again, this is just a library which kind of provides a syntactic sugar around the HTTPX library itself. If you try to search for this library, though, the only thing they can encounter in the internet is the asynchronous HTTP library, which is a little bit different thing, a little bit of different library. And uh, trying to find the asynchronous HTTPX gives the following result, which is, is not quite relevant. All right, so I just spent lots of time trying to find the difference between those libraries and and I just prepared for you a quick demonstration of the functionalities of both libraries and their differences between them. So the HTTPX itself is just an advanced and modern library which enables you to send HTTP requests to the API. And I have a very quick demo here. So if you try to run this project, I'm going to leave the link to this repo in the description section and in the comment section below. If you try to run this project and all you have to do in order to run that, just to use uv python if you run sorry python main.py we can notice that it just uh, sends the following information which is the response body the status code and then the serialized response object and the class of the response object in the dictionary so you can see that it's very similar to the requests library. So what is the difference from the requests? So currently request library uh, only supports the synchronous operations. Meanwhile, HTTPX supports both asynchronous and synchronous workflows. So let me just quickly search for requests Python. And if you open the requests Python, you can see that requests mainly supports synchronous flows mainly supports synchronous operations here. It does have many different type of features here, like keep alive, connection pooling, sessions, cookie persistence and stuff like this. But unfortunately, this library is only for synchronous operations. For a synchronous type of work, you have to rely on two existing libraries, well-known and well-tested and pretty robust, the HTTPX and the asynchronous HTTP. This is the second one. The asynchronous HTTP uses the client session type of thing to manage sessions and responses. But today in this video, we're going to be focusing on HTTPX and asynchronous HTTPX libraries and their difference. So I have prepared a quick demonstration files. The first file is HTTPX example, which basically demonstrates the functionality of HTTPX library and how that works. So if you look at this file, you can notice there is a two functions. The first one is download sync, which basically downloads the images from Unsplash using the synchronous loop and then writing these images to the downloads folder under the HTTPX directory. And then we're just measuring the time that this function was running just to highlight the difference in running time, you know, and to see the difference between asynchronous and synchronous flows. And the second function is download async. So that's pretty much the same type of thing, but it uses asynchronous client unlike the synchronous which uses the synchronous client and this is the only difference here the second difference actually is that we are using the async together async together is like the asynchronous code api which lets you 
gather all asynchronous tasks that you have in your app and runs them concurrently. So it basically says, take all asynchronous tasks and then run them concurrently in your event loop. So that's pretty much it. And then we're just measuring the elapsed time here just to see the time difference in execution. And I have also added two functions, which is latency sync and latency async. And these functions, they actually emulate the network latency. So for example, if we have the synchronous operations, it will emulate the synchronous latency for synchronous requests. As a rule of thumb, the asynchronous latency should be much shorter because, well, because they are asynchronous and they are running concurrently, so it will take much less time. You can find the latency URLs here uh, in the file above, so that's pretty much a straightforward HTTP and ORC delay one second times eight, so this is the array of eight uh, links here. And then if we try to run this code, we can see that, let me just try to run that HTTPX example. Now we can see that HTTPX synchronous operation downloaded three images in 0.72 seconds and asynchronous downloaded those three images in 0.79. But what happens if we add a little bit of latency, like emulated network latency or any other to our execution? We can see that asynchronous operation finished 3.48 seconds. Meanwhile, the synchronous operations took 20.67 seconds, which is quite interesting. Well, that happens because asynchronous operations run concurrently and they are very efficient at processing concurrent latencies and concurrent requests. And if they have some network latencies or API processing time, it does take much less time because these operations are non-blocking. They do not depend on each other. So there is no kind of head of the line blocking here. That's why the synchronous operations took, well, almost six times more than five, six times more than asynchronous operations. So that's one of the difference between using the asynchronous and asynchronous clients in our HTTPX library. And that's one of the upsides of using the kind of asynchronous flow. So you may be wondering why the asynchronous operations actually downloaded three images in 0.79 seconds, unlike the synchronous operations, which took by 0.08 seconds less. The reason is because if you have to manage the asynchronous operations, you have to create separate tasks, you have to manage the event loop, and you have to switch between those tasks. And context switch is always expensive, no matter what you use, whether they are just curtain objects like asynchronous programming, or they are full-fledged multitasking using different tasks, parallel tasks, or parallel processes, it doesn't matter. Context switch always takes some time. But in case if we have API processing time or any network delays or anything, it is much more efficient to use and rely on uh, asynchronous programming. So that's why asynchronous programming still provides much more benefits in, in terms of time efficiency. So moving forward to our next library, which is asynchronous HTTPX and how that works. The first thing that I would like to draw your attention to is this is the compatibility scheme. Because when I was trying to set up this library, it did not work well with the most stable and the most recent version of HTTPX library. Obviously, there are some compatibility issues. And that's one more reason to not use asynchronous HTTPX library because it doesn't provide so many benefits, but it does provide some compatibility issues and other things. So what is the actual difference from the HTTPX library then? Well, the difference is the HTTPX library provides one single client. If you try to search the source code, you can see that class client, it implements both sync plus asynchronous HTTP client with connection pulling HTTP2. So this is pretty much the same thing. And you can make sure that this is true going top to the file and you can see it imports HTTPX. So it basically uses the same, the exact same thing under the hood. And if you try to go, scroll down a little bit here, you can see there are different uh, methods here, like async client returns the, the asynchronous client. As you can see, that uses the same, the exact same asynchronous client here from the HTTPX module. And synchronous client, uh, well, obviously it returns the HTTPX client from the exact same module. So this is the exact same thing, but using 
a kind of a wrapper or a syntactic sugar around the HTTPX library, which is which is no much different from the HTTPX library. So the only reason to use this library is just to make your process uh, smoother. I also heard that sometimes people use this library when they need a proxy switching or a proxy pooling or something like that. When you have a many different proxy servers to use different outbound IP addresses, sometimes it is used when you need to scrape new data from the internet and when your client is being blocked, so you're just using another proxy from AWS and asynchronous HTTPX provides kind of syntactic sugar for this case, a single interface, which is called, um, if I'm not mistaken, this is called proxy. Let me just try to search that, the proxies. So yes, it does support the proxy and it provides the interface for this type of workflow. Here it is, proxy client. Yeah, so it does provide the proxy client. But this type of functionality actually is valuable in HTTPX library itself. So again, this is just a matter of syn syntactic sugar and personal preference rather than necessity. So you can definitely go with the simple HTTPX library and there is no need to uh, use the async to HTTP per se. And uh, in this specific example, as you can see, we're doing pretty much the same thing. First of all, we're trying to call the asynchronous calls here and the synchronous calls, and then we're just measuring the time lapse here, which was spent to run those requests. And then we're uh, simulating the same type of workflow using the network latency and latency URLs. And if we try to run this file, we're going to see the same type of result. As you can see, the asynchronous client still takes just a little bit of more time than synchronous client. And then if we try to run the latency demo with the same client, of course, well, we can see that it took pretty much the same amount of time as our HTTPX library. Actually, it took even more. I hope this video was helpful to you and kind of clarified the difference between these two libraries. So. As a rule of thumb, I would always stick with HTTPX since this library is well supported, it is well documented, it doesn't have any kind of compatibility issues unlike the asynchronous HTTP library which does have compatibility issues, which does have some inconsistencies. Yes, it does provide some syntactic sugar or the simple shared API, but I would still stick with the HTTPX since it's much more stable and better solution for most practical applications. There is no drastic changes from using uh, those two libraries, but HTTPX is like a more stable version of it. There are certain rare cases when you might want to leverage the a kind of functionality and the interface of asynchronous HTTPX, but for most applications, it would be totally fine to stick with HTTPX. And I really hope this video was helpful to you and clarified some nuances between those two libraries and help you to understand those kind of differences between them. And if you did find this video helpful, please feel free to subscribe to this channel. And thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.